Good morning, LifeHouse. My name is George Garza. I'm one of the pastors here at LifeHouse. We're so happy that you're with us this morning through Facebook, through uh, YouTube, through the, all the social media. We want to welcome all our campuses and LifeHouse this morning. Uh, we're so happy that you're with us this morning. I, before I get into the message, we're, we're in a series called Comebacks. Before I get into the message, I wanna, I'm going to talk a little bit about patience. Maybe you had a hard week. Maybe you've been waiting for something that, that, that hasn't happened. Maybe that you, you've lost it because you've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and you're just tired. And this morning as you listen to this message, God is speaking to you. You've been waiting for a person, place, or thing to change and it hasn't. God says in Psalms 40, patiently I waited upon the Lord and he heard my cry. He took me out of the pit. The pit, maybe your pit may be impatience. Your pit may be you, you, it may be you, you blew up. And, it's, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it finishes. It says, he took me out of the pit that I was in. He put me in, in, in solid ground and he straightened out my path. Patiently I waited upon the Lord. God wants to tell you this morning, be, be patient. I know it's hard. But God is working in the times that you think that he is not working. God is moving. God is shaking. God is transforming. God is putting everything into place for your life this morning. And I just want to pray for you before I, I, I start this message. Uh, Father, I pray for the person that's listening this morning, has been waiting for months, maybe a year or years, Lord, or maybe weeks, and they need a miracle, Lord, maybe with their health and their marriage, with their kids, Lord. This morning, the word is patiently, I waited. We will wait on your timing, Lord. We will wait and, and we will be patient, Father. While we wait, we're going to serve, Lord. Father, I pray for that mother that's, that's really impatient about her husband. I pray for that son or that daughter that's impatient with that situation in school or that relationship. Or maybe for that person that's, that's in the hospital and we, we don't know if it was going to happen. Lord, I, I pray for patience. I pray that they wait on you, Lord. That they wait, they wait on your power, on your timing, on your strength, Lord. On your understanding, Lord. And, and I pray that if somebody is in the pit this morning, Lord, that you would take them out of there and put them in solid ground, Father. Father, your timing is perfect. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Good morning. We're, 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 we're in a series called Comeback. And this morning, I, I want to talk about comebacks from a major mistake or major mistake, major error that I made. Uh, today, I, I want to talk about how do I come back from a mistake? I really believe that God has a message for you this morning. God is going to help people make a comeback. It's, it's never too late to make a comeback. I have made so many terrible choices in my life because, because I've had so many setbacks. I've made choices in friendships. I, I, I've wounded friends. I've hurt friends. I've said things that, that I've had to apologize and ask for forgiveness. It, it was a setback and a friendship because of my poor choices in my marriage. I've hurt my wife of 37 years so many times. I've hurt my kids as a father with my words. I, I've had setbacks uh, by my poor choices. Even with God, I, I have messed up. Uh, God knows I've messed up so many times. I've made mistake after mistake. And in my spiritual life, I, ha I have needed a comeback. So, so no matter how old you are or how young you are, no matter how long you've been a Christian, or maybe you're not a Christian, or if, or if you've never been a Christian, every one of us, have one thing in common. We have all made poor choices in life that have set us back. Everybody has had a setback, but not everybody makes a comeback. So this morning, God wants you to make a comeback. Today, we're going to look at the story of a young man who had a has setback, but because of his poor choices, he had a major setback, but, but he made a major comeback. And his story is going to teach us how we can make a comeback. I want to give you four steps to come back from a mistake. Uh, we find the story in Luke 15. And before, let, let me say to all those who follow Christ, who've been Christians for a long time, as I introduce this story, please don't change the channel. Don't tune me out. I know, I know this story. I, I know you know it. I, I know this story is famous, but listen to the end. God has a word for you to help you make your comeback this morning. It's Luke 15. It's about the prodigal son. And he goes to his father and asks for his inheritance, it says. 
And he was supposed to wait till, till his father died to receive it. So, so he's basically saying, Dad, I, I don't need you. You can die now. So he takes the inheritance and spends, spends everything in wild living. It's like he took all his money, went to Vegas. In this distant land, he finds himself broke, hungry, homeless, and working in a pig's pen. He is so hungry, he eats the pig's food. This, is, this young man was in, in need of a comeback. I want to talk to you about four steps to a comeback. The, the, the first step uh, is, is, write this down, is come to your senses. Look at your neighbor, your wife, your children, and tell them he's already talking about you. Luke 15, 7, 17 says, When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. Notice the word, uh, the, the first thing he does when he comes to his senses, he evaluates where his life is. He says to himself, this doesn't make any sense. Write this down. To make a comeback, we have to come to our senses and have an honest evaluation of our lives. When you evaluate your life, you think, I'm, I'm not where I, I want to be. I've been doing the same thing over and over and hoping for different results. My marriage is not where it should be. My career is not, is not where it should be. My finances are not good. My life is not where I want it to be. So you begin to have an honest evaluation. When you come to your senses, I, I ask you this question, where, where are you today? Are you stuck in a pig's pen? Are you going backwards? Are you stuck on neutral, the wrong direction in life? Evaluate your life. Have you hit rock bottom, whatever rock bottom is for you? If you're in a mess, don't, de don't deny where you're at. Don't, don't try to make it appear better than it really is. Have you ever seen somebody do that? It's bad, but, but they try to fake it till they make it. I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm getting divorced, but I, I'm good. No, no, you're not. I'm upside down financially. I'm getting, the, I, I'm bankrupt, but I'm good, really. Be, be honest where, where you're at. I'm about to lose my family, but I'm good. Uh, you, no, you're not. None of my family talks to me, but I'm good. No, you're not. Really? I have problems at work. Nobody like, wants me. Nobody talks to me. I'm okay. No, you're not. I need drugs to sleep every night. I'm good. Be honest about your life. Pastor, why is this so important? Because you will not make a comeback unless you realize you need one. Be honest and realize you need a comeback. To make a comeback, we have to come to our senses and evaluate who we are in Christ. Luke 15, 17, and 18 says, When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. 18 says, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. When the young man came to his senses, he began to evaluate his relationship with his father. He realized he had a father that loved him, a father that would take care of him. But get this, he, he, he had a bad view of his father. Let me tell you something. Understand, you, you can't make a comeback if you see God as a father who doesn't forgive. You, you got to know who God is even in the pig pen of life. I don't care how bad your choices have been how ugly your pig pen is. God is a God of second chances and third and fourth and fifth. God loves you even in your mess, even in your greatest pain, in your greatest failure. God doesn't say, oh, I told you so. Get out yourself. He's not mad at you. He's not trying to get even with you. God doesn't give up on you. Jesus made a comeback so you can have a comeback. God's not trying to pay you back. He's trying to bring you back. You understand that? If you've given your life to Christ, no matter the mistakes you've made, you're still his child. I got four kids, and they're all grown-ups now, but they're all, they're all imperfect like me. They, all of them have traits I have. They, they, they make bad decisions just like me. They lie, they cheat, they hurt people, but no matter what my kids do, I still love them. No matter what they say or what they, what they have done, I still believe in them. I'll fight for them. No matter if they hurt me, I love them. So number one, come to your senses. The second step, take responsibility for what you can change. 
Take responsibilities for which you can change. Luke 15, 18, I will set out to go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. The prodigal son took responsibility for his poor decisions. I have sinned against you, my father. If you're going to make a comeback, take responsibility. When you take responsibility, you don't play the blame game anymore. The son didn't blame his daddy or his mama, his brother. He didn't blame his circumstances or his upbringing or, he, or I was abused. He said, I have sinned. I did, I, I, I did this and it's my fault. I made a poor decision. I left my family. I slept with another woman. I'm here where, where I am because of my poor decision. So many people never make a comeback because they play the blame game. They're blaming everybody. Maybe you, you spent years blaming everyone for your bad decisions. And the reality is you, you will not make a comeback blaming everyone. Blaming other people paralyzes us. You're stuck in your pig pen. Proverbs 19.3 talks about this. He says, people ruin their lives by their own foolishness and they are angry at the Lord. We say, God, why did you let this happen? Take ownership of your life, of your decisions. I am where I am because it's, my, it's been my bad decisions, my, my spiritual life, my health, my marriage, my children, my decisions. I've learned to take ownership instead of blaming other people. When you blame it causes you not to be able to change. If I don't own my decisions on how I got in the pig's pen, I, I, I will not know how to get out. So stop blaming and start changing. Stop blaming, start changing. People who blame rarely change. When you stop blaming, you come to your senses. You take responsibility. When that happens, you don't live in a mistake. You, you learn from the mistake. You don't live in a mistake. You learn from the mistake. The prodigal son decided he wasn't going to live in it, but he was going to learn from it. Enough is enough. No more pig's pen. I'm going back home. All, all of us struggle with this. We beat ourselves up over our mistakes. Why did I do this? Luke 15, 19 says, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. We're beating ourselves up. Make me like one of your hired servants. He was struggling about his mistake. He was beating himself up, but he did not allow his feelings of unworthy to, to keep him from going home. Some of you today can't get out of the pig's pen because you're living in it instead of learning from it. Can I encourage you? Some, can I encourage someone this morning? Would you stop disqualifying yourself from a comeback? Stop beating yourself up. Will you decide you will learn from it instead of living in it? Living in the past, living in the, in the mistake, and begin to learn from it. Learn from the broken relationships. Learn from the divorce. Learn from the bankruptcy. Learn from the uh, living self-centered. Learn from the poor decisions, from the addiction from getting fired, from the bad habit. Learn from it. Don't live in it. Learn from it. God still loves you, and he wants you to make your comeback. So focus on what you can change, not on what you can't change. This young man did not focus on what he couldn't change. He could not change the fact that he rebelled against his father. It's done. He couldn't change the fact that he wasted all of his inheritance money. It's done. All his friends left him. He's in a pig's pen, starving to death. He blew it, messed up. But he decided, I'm, go I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to focus on what I can change. He changed his attitude. He changed his tone. Let me tell you, there is nothing more powerful than a changed mind. He changed his perspective about himself, about his father. And he decided, I'm going to go back home. If you focus on the mistake, you will never, you, you'll put a wall between you and your comeback. Start focusing on what you can change. Let me ask you a question. What can you change? Well, I can change my attitude. I can change my perspective. Some of you need to change your friends. Change your priorities. What's important in your life. Change the rhythm of, uh, of your week. Get into a life group, meet new people, change how you treat people. This is so key on making a comeback. Come to your senses, take responsibility, change what you can change. And step number three, get up. 
Look what it says in, in Luke 15, 12. The powerful words, they inspire me and I get excited. Luke 15, 20. So he got up. He got up. You have to get up and get out of your pig spin if you're going to have a comeback. A get up mind mentality says enough is enough. And it, 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 I, 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 you can make an ugly face about it. I'm getting up. I'm getting out of this pig's pen. I'm not making any excuses. I'm not blaming anybody else. It's over. Bye, Felicia. I'm not going to feel sorry for myself. I'm getting up. I'm not going to complain about the pig's pen. I'm not going to blame my past, my childhood, my friends, my dad, my mom, or my job. I'm getting up. I'm not staying in this pig's pen anymore. I'm going to get out of it. I'm getting up mentality. Stops looking at the past, but looks to the future. A get up mindset ignores the haters and gets around the celebrators. A, a get up mindset. I'm, uh, I'm talking to someone this morning. A get up mindset stops doubting and starts believing. A get up mindset. You're in the pig's pen. Get up this morning. Get out. Pastor, you don't know how many mistakes I've made. Get up. You don't know how many men I've slept with. Get up. Tell your kids, get up. This, this young man got up. And he went, and he went, to, and he went to, to where what he, can, what he can do in life. Quit living in the past and your pain with the person that, that died. Get up for all those excuses you've been making. Get up. If you're going to have a comeback, get up this morning. And the fourth step, go back to your father. Luke 15, 20 says, so he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long ways off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. He got help and he went to his father. He didn't go back to his old friends. He didn't go back to the wildlife. Old, he didn't go back to the old habits. He got up and went back to his father. A comeback story is impossible without Jesus. Why? Why is this so important? Because whenever we end up in a pig spin in any area of our lives, it's because we went into the wrong, we're going the wrong direction from Jesus. And when we come back to our senses and we decide to get, get up, take a step to in God's direction. The Bible says when the young man took a step at the fa to the father's direction, the father ran to him to meet his son, to love him. He threw him a party. God wants you to make a comeback. You got to get up and go to God. God will give you your comeback. Take steps in God's direction today. He loves you. He forgives you. Waiting for you. God will heal you. The father, the father, let me tell you something. I had, I had just graduated from high school and was working for my dad in, in landscaping. And dad gave me a credit card. I thought I was going crazy. Dad gave me, he, had, he just said, has your name. I, I thought, nice. He said, hold on, George. This credit card is under your name, but I received the bill. Understand that? And this credit card is only for emergencies. And I says, well, okay, dad. So the first six months that I, have it, I had it, I charged $700 of emergencies. So my dad came to me and says, you're going to pay it, dude. I says, why? I'm trying to pay it every day. I'm trying to pay the $700. I never did. So one day after my dad seen that I, I couldn't pay the $700, he says, hey, I paid the debt. Every time we sin, that sin is under our name, but God pays the debt. Understand that. Every time we sin and we mess up, it's under our name, but God pays the debt. God wants to tell you this morning that he's paid the debt of your sin. No matter what you've done, he wants you to make a comeback. And this morning is a perfect time. You, you've been stuck too long. You've been making bad decisions too long. You've been blaming everybody for your mistakes. Maybe you're mad at your mom and your dad and you haven't talked to them. Oh, that's a sore subject. Every time Father's Day comes around, it's a bad day for you. Every time Mother's Day comes around, it's a bad day for you. Every time their birthdays come around. Every time you go to Christmas parties, family gathering, it's a bad. Let me tell you something. God wants to make a comeback in your family. 
How is he going to do it? He paid the debt already. He wants you to go back, make a comeback, and ask for forgiveness to those people that you've hurt. Why? Because just like you ask God for forgiveness, you will ask other people for forgiveness and make your comeback. This is a perfect time for a comeback in your life. Maybe you've messed up so many times. Maybe you've tried coming back so many times. But these four points that I gave you this morning are perfect for you. Understand your identity. You're a child of God. He is your father. He forgives you. There is nothing he won't do for you. He is there for you. He is not embarrassed of you. He does not say figure it out by yourself. He doesn't say, you know what, you're going to suffer. I'm going to pay you back. The father doesn't say that. He says, I love you. I forgive you. Make your comeback. Can you make your comeback in your marriage? God says, I love you. I forgive you. I want your marriage to make a comeback. You've been away from your wife, your husband for six months to a year. You've been afraid to make the comeback. Today, today, today is the day of comebacks, God says. And you listening to this message is no coincidence. The Holy Spirit will speak to your marriage and bring life and bring the comeback out. So you, you'll understand that your setback was a setup for the comeback. Why? Because God wanted your heart. He wanted your attention. He wanted you to serve Him. And He wanted you to learn what forgiveness is through all of this. Pastor, you don't know what my husband or my wife has done to me. There is no hope in my marriage. There is no hope in this relationship. There is no hope in this situation. I've been hurt so bad. I need, I, I don't know what to do. I keep on falling. I keep on falling. Let me tell you something. The father saw the son. As soon as the son came to his senses, you come to your senses when you, when you start evaluating your life. I'm tired of living this way. Are you tired of living the way you're living? Do you want to come back? This morning is a perfect time for your comeback pray for you and I'm going to pray for that comeback because God is speaking to you this morning he paid the debt already that you can come back father this morning for those people that are listening to us and that are making their comeback Lord this is a perfect day for a comeback to send a text this is a perfect day for a comeback father to, to in your marriage in your kids lives with your grandfathers in a relationship at work this is a perfect time for a comeback. Lord, we need a comeback. Give me a comeback, Lord. Let me understand and come to my senses. Let me evaluate my life, Lord. Let me come back to my Father, Father. This morning, Lord, I need a comeback. Father, this morning, I pray that this comeback that you're giving me this morning, Father, I will take my steps if you'll take yours, Lord. I thank you for that in your name we pray. Thank you for being with us this morning. If you can help out LifeHouse, any, this is the way you can help us. Number one, you can pray for us. Number two, you can help us financially. There'll be a, a, a point in this, uh, uh, down, down in the bottom of where you can, you can help us out financially with our one-time offering or, or start tithing to LifeHouse, Coachella. We want to let you know that this church is God's church, it's not ours. And we see God's hand moving all over it. But this morning, I just want to encourage you. I pray for your week, that you have the best week of your life. I pray that you have your incredible comeback. And I pray that, that God will just bless you throughout the whole week. Bless your family, your finances, and your health, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Until next week. Right there where you're at, can you just lift your hands, church? Just worship you, Lord. You are our champion, Father. I've tried so hard to see it. Took me so long to believe it. That you choose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection could never earn it. You give what we don't deserve, and you take the broken pieces and raise them to glory. 
You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won, I am who you say. The one who has conquered it. surrender ourselves to you Lord and we believe that in this season that we are in whether we are battling with anything in our lives we believe that you go before us therefore in you we have the victory can you just believe that church that we are victorious in the name of Jesus and when we cry out to the Lord the creator of heaven and earth we have victory Come on, can you stand to your feet? Can you just lift your hands? Can we just begin to worship and adore the God of all creation? Yes, Lord, we worship you, Lord. Authority. 
voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me Undefeated by the power of your name, I am seated in the heavenly place. Undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. I have no doubt in my heart that today God ministered to you through worship or the Word, something that was personal, something that you need to do something with the Word of God. So not just receive the Word of God, let's just not be hearers of the Word of God. The challenge is to do something with the Word of God. Move beyond the pale, go beyond your normal routine and watch God continue to work in your life, the miraculous, the supernatural. This is Pastor Saul thanking you for being with us online today. I'd like to encourage you. I'd like to challenge you to give. Trust the Word of God when it says give and it shall be given unto you. Trust Jesus or the Apostle when he said it is better to give than to receive. Something supernatural begins to happen as you give, as you give with your heart, as you are generous. Give and God will see that seed uh, and make sure that that seed grows into a blessing both to the house of God, the work of God, but also your household. Also connect with us. Would you uh, download our Church Center app? Uh, take that extra step to connect with LifeHouse, Growth Track, and the many events and activities that are unfolding right before you. Get connected. We'll see you in person as soon as you're able to. That is the challenge for today. And then follow us on Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook. Would you take a moment to download or connect with us or follow us in these platforms and be part of this army, be part of this movement, be part of this church that God has called to reach thousands of people and lead them to know God, grow together, and go serve. I bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for being part of this online ministry to the glory of God.